Welcome back to This Day Live, the Sunday talk show here on the Rise News Channel. Former Nigerian Chief of Defense Staff, Air Chief Marshal Alex Sabundu Bade, was in the past week shot dead by yet to be identified gunmen. In a statement signed by the Director of Public Relations and Information, Nigerian Air Force, Air Commander Ibikunle Daramola, Chief Bade died from gunshot wounds sustained when his vehicle was attacked. Bade had been facing trial since 2016 at the Federal High Court in Abuja for alleged 3.97 billion fraud brought against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Sad news. Very sad. Very sad. Very sad. And, um, you know, this show, you know, there's been a lot of conspiracy theories that have been bounded, bandied around over his death, as unfortunate as it is. Um, he was the chief of defense. I think maybe he had also been the head of the Air Force. And like you rightly said, he was facing criminal charges for, I think, part of that Dasuki money, yeah. you know, monies that were supposed to have been used for the fight against yeah. Boko Haram. Okay. And of course, that doesn't make him very popular with Nigerians. The, you know, these are the people we should hold accountable for our party, for our country being so insecure today. But be that as it may, you know, you begin to wonder what this power is all about. Because when he was in office, I don't think that gentleman would have been killed that cheaply. No, you can imagine all what oh, and, yeah. and it is good for those that are in office today to mm. remember what One could day happen you're tomorrow. Gonna vacate yes. your face. You know, because how can you kill a former defense chief that cheaply from the photographs I saw? Mm. You understand? Um, yes, there, there's, you know, as usual, we politicize everything mm. here. So the PDP is on one side saying uh, they killed him uh, because he told uh, the president he was a bigot. You know, I've read all sorts of things. And of course, the APC is of the view that we, we definitely have no hand in this. Mm. This is just how insecure. But then again, the hand the APC has in it is that the APC comes to us every day to tell us how secure the country, they have secured the country, mm -hmm. how, you know, the Boko Haram has been driven out, yes. kidnappers are this, this, and then these things are happening every day. So that exactly, to me, is where the issue, where, where the problem is. Because if it know. could happen with a man like him, who's oh, safe? No, nobody's safe, Nigeria. definitely, okay. definitely. What are your thoughts, Yemi? No, I think, I mean, to chicken's point around, around the politicization of it, I think squarely the person in office is the APC. So if anybody, no matter how you want to deflect or not deflect, ultimately the security, per the Constitution, is the role of government. Security and welfare of citizens is the responsibility of government. And really, honestly, I, I just want to echo what you said about a reminder that power is transient. And I really don't believe that our elected public officials remember that as much as they should. That regardless of the 20 car convoy you have today or the people who are yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, you every minute or everywhere you go, you will leave office because there's no elected office that is adding that's into in, perpetuity. Yeah, it's you, all you finite. Yeah, you have a finite term. That, that is um, why, you know, we should eliminate all that 20 car convoy. <laughs> we should go and empower our youths yeah. with all kinds of um, entrepreneurship programs and things. Reduce the unemployment army waiting out there for all of us. Yeah. It is a ticking bomb. Yeah. You know, I don't know whether Nigerians understand. You see, those of us in Lagos, we just stay here and um, we are cut away from the realities of what's really going. The kind of poverty. Yes, that and desperation. Desperation. Let's, no, no, exactly. no, 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 no. Let's be very clear. Don't say those of us in Lagos. Lagos is a whole state. Yes. So if you, if your Depth access of Lagos. movement yes. is equally Vi Leki, maybe Keja, you can have that kind of conversation. Yes. But you go to other parts of Lagos, Lagos, then you know that life is real. So let's but let's also be very clear. said earlier about when you're in the villa, you never want to leave, yeah, you people don't want always to imagine that they're going to be When you go to visit, you don't want to leave. Yeah. I can assure you. Say you didn't want to leave. Ah, don't you you want to leave. No, no, just, I, I'm I wanted you. to go to my house. Yeah, hey, you're just after I, you went I there. I still have a house. Okay, people people, people, people would never imagine that there will be a time that they will leave and they will not have all exactly. the orderlies and yeah. what have you, mm. and live the life that your average person lives. So this is how vulnerable yeah. we all are. Yeah. That's right. Indeed. And a murder like this only goes to highlight that. It's scary. It, it, well, it, it, and, it should, and I think that's the thing, it should be. It really should be a wake-up call that it is, this country is not safe. And to your point, in the countries that you've sort of mentioned earlier in our conversation, 
the Prime Minister in the UK is able to walk down number 10 down yeah. because she's assured nobody's going to bug, like, yes. take, shoot her on yes. walking down the road. Definitely. And so until we make Nigeria safe for all of us, so there's a bit yeah. of the pomp and pageantry because we like to show off. That's right. Or some of us do like to show off. So that's that bit of it. But then there's a bit that in a sense almost comes with your office that's, that's expected right. that you do have this. It's a practical because you're, Yeah, because you're protecting yourself yeah. from people you have impoverished. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> really? Now we go to Ocean State, where a federal high court in Oshobo has sentenced Richard Akindele, sacked lecturer of the Abafemi Awolowo University, OAU, Ileife, to two years in prison. The court handed the sentence after Akindele pleaded guilty to a four-count charge filed against him. Akindele was arraigned by the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, for attempting to have sex with Monica Osage, one of his students, in exchange for marks. In an audio which went viral online in April, Akindele was heard demanding five sessions of sex to award Osage a pass mark in a course she failed. Maureen Onyetenu, the presiding judge, held that it was necessary to punish the professor to serve as a deterrent to other lecturers. Well done, Maureen Onyetenu. <laughs> Thank you for that. Indeed, indeed, yes. indeed. Uh, look, um, this, this, this um, sex for Max as it were in, the, in our universities. I'm sure you all know it's not something that started today. Oh, it's, uh, it's such a murky area because you begin to, when you go into it, you now start what roles the, the two individuals play. A lot of the young ladies these days, they don't want to go to, they don't want to work, they don't want to go to school. Mr. They just yeah. Hold on, yeah. let me what finish. Dangerous you, terrain, you, I'm yes, giving you a heads up. Yes, yes, I'm just giving the you a heads up. I'm not, giving you a heads up. Let me say I'm my I'm piece saying, and you will have your time, no, my dear. Okay. They, they, they won't go to classes, they're mm. going all over town looking for people, to men to give them money or not mm. to give them money. Mm. And of course, they won't read their book. When mm -hmm. the exams come, they get desperate. They go, they lay out these guys from that. I'm not saying that what happens all the time, mm -hmm. you know. And um, so what I'm saying that every situation is very different, you know. Mm -hmm. And until you get the whole detail of it before you can. You know, I love what is happening now. This is a good example, and I thank God for it. So that these men, because when you hold yourself as a lecturer, you are in with them. Um, parents of these children. So you, you are almost like a, they should see you as a father. So even when you have these errand girls that come to you for that, it should be, you know, decent enough to say, look, stop it. You, exactly. I'm sure many of them have daughters that age. Exactly. You know, so yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not trying and to if hold you don't, for if that. If you lack the moral you know? capacity, yes. the, the idea of a two-year jail term <laughs> will curb you, whether <laughs> you're Actually, the predator or six. the prey. I think it was even six, six years. years. Yeah, right. but they run concurrently or something, you yeah. know, for the counts. Because they had the four charges. Yeah. Yeah. So you will be curbed yeah. by the by the two years. Whether you're the predator who's trying to lure the girls or you're the prey that's been lured, <laughs> yes. nobody wants to go to jail <laughs> for two for, years. Yes, and, you know. You know for any so, so yeah, let me say your piece because I, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I know you're a you, you you university <laughs> child. I am. Proud, <laughs> she was so. raised Funny, up in the like, university. I, was, I grew up, I grew up at, uh, was University of Ifi at the time. Yes, now, now first in, class university. The, the same university. No, I was just a bit worried about where mm. you were going. But you're, I mean, girls luring or... or Lecturers being predatory. I think ultimately the responsibility lies with the lecturer. Definitely. Yes. Um, because you want, you have the power. Yeah. The person who's luring you is luring you because you have the power to determine her destiny if she fails or has to repeat. And you also have that power to hold over them based on whatever it is that you want. And I think it's really very significant that um, this judgment. For me also, p particularly because Monica's lawyer it was also an IFE graduate. Um, she was a student union PRO when she was in IFE. So her, her track record of activism quite quite long. And also now she's actually a lecturer, ironically, at the University of Lagos. So I think for Biola Kinyodi and her team who worked on this, really very, very proud of them and, and congratulations to them as well. But for universities, as you said, it's not news. But that we have this judgment in this season of Me Too in Nigeria, I think for me is extremely significant. Um, we've talked about it not only in the context of the universities, we've talked about it in the context of the workplace. That if this if people really started talking about Me Too as it relates to workplace in Nigeria, the, the kinds of things that will be unveiled will be absolutely astonishing. And I hope for um, women who have had Monica's experience, either in school or in the workplace, that this emboldens them a bit to tell their story. And in looking for people, I'm sure Abiola will be glad to help and support, that people, there is justice. I mean, because the, I guess the, the 
maxim is that justice must not only be done, but must be seen to, to be, be done. done. Yeah. That's right. So in, first of all, suspending the professor, that's one bit of it. But in now him actually having a jail term for yeah. an offense, to your, to your point, that's, that's been done. That's not a new thing. Yeah. But then now there's actually a penalty for it, yeah. and it's not one thing you're... Um, sweeping under the table. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I, th I think it's wonderful because if you recall initially when this audio first went viral, mm. there was an attempt mm -hmm. to dismiss it. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. There was an attempt to rubbish the, the, the Monica, Monica lady yes, yes. and dismiss her and silence yeah, her. Yeah, that's right. So the thing is so failed. murky. Yeah, yeah. yeah, because you see, except you, <laughs> these, those two people that really know what transpired, you know, really, between them, 100% of it. No, but, you but we heard about transpire. Exactly. Yeah, I don't think, as it yeah, exactly. exactly. But I don't think we should, we should uh, toe that line of murkiness. I think in more cases than not, it's usually very clear. Yes. But the, the default position is to dismiss it because of... If you, you framed yours in terms of responsibility, but yeah. a lot of people start with, it's the student that led, so therefore... Yes. She's a willing participant, yes. so therefore we should disregard it. Yes. So that happens a lot. In, and then as someone said, I mean, there's a, a nice graphic that's going around that reasons for rape, um, what she was wearing. She was walking <laughs> at night. Yeah. Sort of all sorts of things that we throw out. Yeah. And one of the yeah. ones that, that colored the bar was rapist. Yeah. So regardless of if you're walking naked, yeah. Yeah. there's no justification yeah. for that. And there's I think that's whatsoever. what we need to shift in, yes. our, in our minds as a society. Whether, oh, I think it was, people are saying, oh, entrapment, yeah. whatever yeah. may be her no, motive. No, no, the law, the law, is, the law is clear on that. The law is clear on that. Yeah, exactly. Until exactly. the woman has the prerogative to say yes or oh, no. Yeah. And once she says no, whatever yeah. she's wearing, whatever she's not wearing, <laughs> None of that can avail you. And but silence should never be seen as concern. Oh, sense. definitely. Yeah. It's a strict thing. Yeah. In the law is strict. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing that I want to use this you know, time we're talking about is to encourage the young men as well, who mm. might, you know, let's flip the coin a bit, who might be indeed. harassed as yes. well, because yeah. I'm sure there are one or two young yeah, men indeed. that yes, might be indeed. harassed by older ladies. Yes. Let them come out and tell their stories. Indeed. Yes, they should. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. They should. You know? and, that, and that's a very, good, not really very important as well. It's not yeah. necessarily a one-way traffic. Indeed. No, not at all. Just that it might be more pervasive, you know, for, with, for, 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 women, for yeah. men to do the harassing, you yeah, know, indeed. as it were. Absolutely. Yeah. Because and men by nature are predators, you know that. Really. <laughs> are you? And also just the point as well, and also for universities, mm -hmm. sorry, I think it also provides a, a great opportunity for universities to begin to put processes in place that allow students to complain anonymously without fear of reprisals and understand that they would be protected. I mean, it's a process that um, OA, OAU does have, but students didn't feel quite comfortable with, with it, it because you needed to report. I mean, I think at some stage, the, the, a part of this proceeding as well, Monica said the person she reported to said, oh, you want me to complain about my boss? I'm not here for that. So that providing spaces so not, that students... Not even just that, Yemi. What about even the board mm. that you are taking the report to? Yeah. Are you sure yeah. they Who's themselves? on? <laughs> <laughs> not complicit. So these are yeah. just... Uh, Indeed. Just... But we're changing, we thank God. Yes, it's a, it's great, a, it's a big great step. Very yeah. big, very Wonderful big step. Wonderful development. Great way to end the year. Yes.